Hey, there's Coach 2K with Coach2K.com. Going to show you how to shoot in NBA 2K12. First thing I do is go into practice mode and change my settings to Hall of Fame mode and my default speed settings to 55. I try and do that across all of my different modes, the same thing, and I turn on shot quality feedback, shot timing feedback. That way I can get a good idea of whether I'm releasing the ball right. And then also I use the camera relative setting in the settings so you can see, you know, there's two settings and I use the camera relative. And then I use the same mode, the same camera view in all my modes, 2K view. That way when I'm releasing in practice, it's just like in the games. And I suggest you do the same settings across all zones. And so I'm in practice mode. This is freestyle. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is to learn the proper way to shoot. And that in the PlayStation, you just take the right stick, you pull it back, and you let it go. There, I pull it back, let it go. Feels a lot like a jump shot to me, having played basketball before. I like that a lot. But you can also, I know the kid uses the square, and so you can use the square and release and have the same thing happen. But uh, I suggest you use the stick because if you use the stick for all your shots, including your layups and your dunks, then you don't have to go from square mode to stick mode. And because uh, there's going to be times you're going to want to move the ball away from the defense when you're shooting, particularly like on a layup. So here I'm going to go down. I'm going to take a layup, shoot it with my right hand away from the defense. And I do that by pushing to the stick to the right. And there I use my left hand. And so, you know, if you're going in and the defense is on one side, you need that flexibility by using the stick. So there I use the left hand. Now if I come in and the defense is on that side and I can I can decide to go with the left hand and take it away from the defense and then same way over here I can use the right hand so I go in and you know that time I used the left hand because I think I got stuck I didn't choose soon enough so let's try it again so go in and there I use the left hand again but in general I think this time you know when I go in I come in and I, and I use it and I got the right hand now what you'll want to do is also you want to be able to dunk the ball and to dunk the ball on the PlayStation you use the R2 button R2 button and then you use the stick and they usually push it forward but you can also push it in different directions and it'll do different things so like here I'm going to pull it back and I'll do a reverse dunk and if you move it the other directions it'll also do different things but it depends on your player's dunk package and so if the player can't dunk they won't dunk um, if they can't reverse, they won't. So, but that's the best shot. That's the shot you want in a game is a dunk. So you got to you got to be able to know how to dunk. Now, next thing you need to know is you know learning perfect releases. So releases have three spots. You got early, and so you can see even if you sh shoot it poorly, there's still a, sh a chance it's going to go in, just like in real life. And if I shoot it early it's going to go long so if you're online you don't have a shot indicator and you see you shot your shot long then you're going to know you let it go early and so you know there's another example early but it went in there I held it too long and it's short so if you are online and you see you shot it short then you know you let it go you held on too long and then there's another or uh, another late one so here we're going to do one that's a green perfect release you see that it went in and so somewhere between early and late is the perfect release you can find it by also watching the blue circle flash underneath your player so here when I shoot watch the blue circle flashes that's when I should let go again doesn't mean it's going to go in every time here, let's try it again blue circle I let go and again of course it doesn't go in but um, in order for it to go in more often you need to release when the circle flashes blue and that tells you when the perfect release is now every player is going to have their own release point so if I substitute in Collison here you know, I need to know his release too. And I find it by watching the blue flash. You can see that I get it to go in. Blue flash goes in. Now some players have a tell. His legs kind of kick out when it's about time for him to release. Dirk Nowitzki's a lot like that. And so you want to know everybody on your team's release. And you want to practice it in practice mode. 
that way when you're in games, you know, you're not surprised on when they're going to release it. All right, so now the other thing to talk about is is looking at each player's hot zones. I, there's basically these rings inside a hot zone chart. And so you know, you'll notice it's color coded. There's red, there's blue, and there's gray. And um uh, so these represent, like this is a hot zone. You know, this is where he likes to shoot from. Just like in real life, players have spots they like to shoot from. That's where Granger likes to shoot from. Then you have the gray zones. You know, he doesn't like to shoot as well there, but it doesn't bother him as much. And then, you know, the blue zones too. And so those are the zones he doesn't like to shoot as well. Now, typically, maybe you'll hit 7 out of 10 in the red zones in practice mode. Maybe 6 out of 10 in the in the gray ones and maybe five or more out of the blue. You can do good, you know, from every zone at any particular time, but overall over the long haul, that's probably how, you know, you might end up doing. Now also to go with the hot zones are your player shooting ratings. And you're gonna know, for example, that if I bring if I look at all the shooting ratings, I'll see that there's a rating for inside, close, medium, and three point. And those match up with the rings of the hot zones. So inside is the take charge zone, close is the zone right after that, medium is right after that, and then the three point is outside the three point line. And so like there you can see David West, he's got like a 90 close and 90 medium. And that means that he can really shoot. And then if I decide to shoot with him, and I shoot open and set from a hot zone in one of his highly rated areas, there's a pretty good chance he's going to go in. And so you want to play to your player's strengths and shoot with them from where they know how to shoot from. Uh, you know, you don't want to shoot like, for example, I got Roy Hibbert on my team. I don't want to shoot threes with him. And so shot quality is very important you know, right here. That's the best shot you can get inside that zone. And so I want to get as many shots with my players right in there as I can because that's the best shot. If I can uh, if I can get a dunk, let's see if we can get him to dunk it here. You know, that's the shot I want. But if I can't get that shot, then I'll shoot a layup. Otherwise, you know, then I'm, the next best possible shot for me to shoot is right in here. And if I get a shot from in there, then I, then I want to do that. And then after that, if I can't get shots from a player in there during a game, then the next best possible ring is for me to shoot in the mid-range zone. So I like to keep my shots within especially the first two rings inside and close, and then after that, the medium range, and I want to limit my shots you know, from the three-point line. And particularly here, you can see he's got a shot quality of F. You know, That's not his shot. And so... You know, if I had, if that was his range, you know, like here, look at this, I shoot in his range, A plus, and that's the kind of shot you want to shoot for him. Now, if you have defense, it'll lower that. It depends on the situation of the game. But he's got a nice shot from there. I wouldn't have known that had I gone not gone in and looked at the ratings. And so you got to know your players and where they can shoot from. And then you just go in. Now, there, there there's a leaner. You know, I recommend su shooting set shots. You know, you don't want to shoot these fadeaways and runners. and doesn't mean you can't hit them. doesn't mean your players can't do them. Uh, but, you know, that's a subject for another episode. You know, so there's a fadeaway. And so you want to you wanna get set shots. Set shots are some of your best shots that you can take. So here I'm taking Hibbert in there. Let's take a look at his shot quality. If I shoot from three with him, it's an F. That's a bad shot for Hibbert. I'm never going to shoot from out there unless it's like at the end of the shot clock. But that shot right there, I use that all the time. 15, 20 feet away, he gets an A+. Plus. He can hit that a lot. See, and then that's the shot I really want in the game from Hibbert is right in the inside zone. 
and a dunk. So that's what I'm after when I go start to possession is getting that shot right there because that's my highest quality shot on offense is the dunk, and particularly with Hibbert. So what you want to do is learn to practice from with each player. And so, you know, what I do is shoot from each zone, learn to get an A-plus if you can, try to. You won't be able to every time with a perfect release. There, I got, you know, I didn't get an A-plus, but I got the release right. And so you'll want to go in and shoot from all these zones with all your players. Of course, you won't need to do that with Hibbert. And, you know, like in my case, my center's Hibbert. You know, he's not going to shoot from out there. I don't necessarily need to shoot shots with him. And I'd suggest, you know, maybe shooting 10 from each zone and even keeping track of it to see how you do to try and get your release points right. And then to do that with each player. And then I've got a spreadsheet I keep to see how I'm doing. And then the other thing I'd do is kind of compare that to your games. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But go to each zone, pop shots from every spot so you get used to how it feels on the camera. And 10 shots is good. Now, I try and do that maybe once a week with your whole team just to stay sharp. And to learn your players. And at least do it with your starting five. You know, I right now I'm about five deep in mastering my players as far as their shot releases are concerned. I still got a ways to go. Certainly with two or three of them, I've definitely mastered uh, them. And so, you know, shoot some layups. Try and dunk it. So, but just have a method to your practice routine. Uh, it'll keep you sharp. And, you know, maybe with a three-point shooter, you'll spend some time working on your threes, a little extra time from the spots he's good at. And that'll help you when it comes to games. You'll be used to taking those shots, but you want to take them open. You want them to be set shots. And, you know, basically go 1 to 12 on all your team and learn how to shoot with all of them and see how you you know, if you can master all their releases, you'll be much stronger in a game if you can do it with everybody. So at the end of the game, this is what a shot chart looks like. And so like here I played the Heat last night. He shot 57% and I shot 65%. And you can see that within the inside, close, and mid-range range, I shot all my shots in there. And really within the first two circles I did. I only shot four shots outside of the inside two zones and I made him count I hit all four of them and you can see what I did with each player and I took such good shots I only shot less than 50 percent with one of my guys and that was Hibbert because there was so much defense and so you now there George he was three for four Granger three for three five for six for Collison you know Wes look at that 71 percent and you can see Roy, had, I struggle with Roy a little bit. But this is what you want your shot chart to look like at the end of the game. Most of your shots in the first inside, two inside circles, the take charge circle and the close circle. Now, you know, in this game, this is a game normally I would have won. And I hung with him. You know, I came back, got it close at the end of the game there. But I had too many turnovers. I had 15 turnovers because I was playing the Heat. and He was playing LeBron from the one spot. You know, I had Collison in there. Collison's like six feet tall. There's no way he can guard LeBron. But I was still in the game. So at the end, I was down maybe 11, 12. But my shooting percentage just kept going and going and going and going. And finally, I got within a few points at the end of the game. And then I just couldn't overcome it. But playing online is good practice like that. So this is a game where I shot 76%. No offense to... The guy that I played, I just wanted to use this as an example, so I thought I'd walk you through my thinking during the game. So the first thing I want to do is get it inside, and I turn the ball over. All right, I got a nice block there. So I ran the ball, and I got a layup. So that's inside that circle. And so that's what I look for. Now on the break, you don't want to take, you know, one guy against three defenders. Like there, I, you know, I had it 
felt like I had an advantage, so I took it. So you got to, you know, if it's one against three or four, you don't want to take it. Like, there you got in. That's an excellent shot. Inside the take charge circle. So you hear the crowd cheering. They get you momentum. So there I got Hibbert. I got him inside that circle, and I got a good shot with him. You can see he's trying to get it in there. He got bumped, but still a good shot inside that circle. So see I'm trying to get Hibbert to move around here a little bit. Okay, there's West. I know he can shoot from there. And there I got a layup. So just uh, right around the take charge circle line. So I know that's a shot he can hit, as long as he doesn't have defense on it. That's too bad. All right, so there he took uh, kind of a mid-range shot with a guy that can shoot from mid-range. So here I'm thinking I want to get a dunk. So best guy I dunk with is Hibbert. But you now there's a nice shot inside the circle with George. All right, so I got a steal. I'm on the break. I got the kind of the advantage because I knew Kyle also could hit that and he got the layup. So that's, that's an iffy one because, you know, I was one against two. You know, and there he got bumped, so you can see if you get bumped, you know, it's not as good of an inside shot. So you can see, you know, how well I'm shooting there. So here I'm thinking, can I get it to Hibbert? Can I get an inside shot with a dunk? And they ended up taking it with Kyle, so it was still a good shot. A lot of times people will sag off on me if they play me before they know I want to get it to Hibbert. That opens up that little shot inside. There I got another steal. I got a fast break. That's sometimes a tough shot to hit, but I couldn't resist it. So sometimes your emotion will get the best of you. And there he popped a, a three with a hand in his face. So that's not a good shot. So here I got Granger. And he's like wide open there. And I missed it. So, you know, I'll take that shot. Probably was too early in the shot clock. You know, I could have gotten a better shot. All right. So you know what I'm thinking. I want to get the best shot I can. You know, I got Garnett guarding me and kind of stuck in an animation here. So I call timeout. Looking at my settings to see how these are set up. I got them set that way, I think, just because I used the um, directional button on when I was on defense. And then I decided to sag off of Rondo because he's not a very good shooter. And, and if I get him to take shots instead of like Allen and Pierce, you know, that works to my advantage. So you can see because of my shooting percentage, I'm already up six. Even though I took a couple bad shots, at least in my opinion. So let's see if we can get in a shot inside that circle. There you go. I got George. Got him a dunk. So that's the shot I want all day. Somebody dunking it. And the hard part's getting that every time. So you can see here, he's getting it inside. And he got a nice layup there. So that was a good shot selection. Okay, so here I you know, set up. All my guys are down here. Sometimes people will run down and they'll shoot. There I got, I got Hibbert. That was kind of a dunk. I think I just laid it over the rim. But sometimes people see he's got a guy trailing him. 
And uh, finally, he's down there. But you want to make sure you get all five guys down there if you don't have a break. You know, if you're coming down and it's one on three, you want to pull it out. Set it up. Let everybody get down to the court. You'll have more rebounders that way and a better, you know, work it around a little bit, try and get a better shot. So there I got a steal. So I'm able to work it on the break. And he did a good job playing defense there. So here you can see in this particular situation, I decided I wanted to get it to West. And, you know, that was just inside the circle. And that shot wasn't as good because I kind of had some defense standing out there by me, but I still got it to go. So there, and that's a bad shot. He had some defense on him. Could have gotten a better shot, although with Pierce, you know, he can get away with that. So there, there's a good example when you take it inside and you get shots inside that circle. Uh, this is what's going to happen. You're going to go to the line. You're going to shoot some free throws. And, of course, you know, I didn't hit it here. Yeah, I got my perfect release. And so you're going to go to the line more. You're going to get some AM ones Just all a result of where you're shooting from. You know, if you're shooting jump shots all day, you know, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to, there I took a shot with Hibbert at, at the end, but, but uh, you're taking jump shots all day, you're not going to go to the line. So really here, you know, because of my shooting percentage, I'm up 11 points. You know, I got some steals early and some fast break that made it a little bit easier. And um, so there he got me off my feet, and he got, good things happen. He got it into the circle. Got a layup and an AM1. Didn't get the, didn't get the uh, free throw. See there, there, I'm trying to push it against. I didn't have an advantage, so I turned the ball over. All right, so look, inside the circle he got fouled, so he's going to the line. This is why you got to know how to shoot your free throws with all your players. You know, normally he might get Allen and Garnett fouled, but, if, you know, there he got the second one, but maybe... Maybe Bass doesn't get fouled as much. So it's a good idea to shoot with that guy. So my thinking here, as you can probably guess, is I want to get it inside the circle. And he did a good job playing uh, defense and tip the ball. So I got to take it out of bounds. So let's see if I can get the shot that I want. Okay. Inside the circle and a dunk. Didn't go, but I got fouled. So I got two shots. So that's exactly, you know, I wish Hibbert would have got the and one. Didn't happen, but at least I got two shots from the line. I know how to shoot with Hibbert. And I'll take that. He's working Collison. Had an advantage there. And so he got a good shot. Okay, so there I got West, trying to get him inside that circle. Close to it, got a layup, basically. All right, so, okay, there, look at that. He knows that's a good shot. He knows he needed to score. So look at that, what am I like? I don't know, can't read it from here, 10 for 12 or something like that. So there we go. So there I got uh, inside the circle and I scored. You know, I'm really doing this within the flow of the offense. It's not like I'm just barreling over everybody like they do with LeBron. There you had a wide open shot. That's a pretty good shot. The other thing you're going to notice is, is that when you when you get good shots, there I tried to throw a cross court pass, you can't do that. So here, he doesn't have numbers. So, you know, like one against two there. And of course he missed the shot. And so I decided not to take that three because you know, it wasn't the best possible shot I could get. And of course, I almost turned it over. 
So let's see if I take a better shot. You can always get that three. Look at that. Instead, I got a layup. And the more of those layups and dunks that you get, the more momentum swings your way, and it makes it easier to hit your outside shots. And it's more likely that your opponent will miss their, their outside shots. So like there, he's taking a jumper, and he missed it. And one of the reasons is, is because I got the momentum. He missed both of them. Now, this is funny because I kept trying to get it through there, and he, <laughs> he kept stealing it. So nice job by him. I was trying to force it. So what you'll find is when, if, you, if you have an advantage, you'll just start, you, you'll play a little looser, just like in real life. And so you'll take chances that you normally wouldn't take in there. I tried to throw it across that imaginary line down the middle of the court. and So, so there, you know, that's a shot. It's wide open. Here it got him some momentum. And so I called timeout. That's a good shot. That's that guy's shot. It's wide open. It's within the flow of the offense. And you know, even with the momentum kind of against him, he was still able to get that shot to go. Superstar is going to have that advantage. They're going to be able to do that. So there we go. I got a dunk. That's the shot I want. So you get to, somebody gets the momentum going against you, getting good shots like that, especially a dunk after it. And, you know, it quieted the crowd down. And it works in your favor. So that's, that's how you want to respond to, you know, somebody getting a run. If, obviously, if you can't do it offensively, then you do have to call timeout. But I called a timeout, and I did it with my offense, and I got another dunk. So you can see, you know, now, you know, I'm I'm up by uh, what seven. And look, he took a shot with a guy in my face, a guy in his face. He's luckily he got the rebound, but you know that's not the kind of shot you want. You, want, you don't want anybody between you and the basket. You want it to be. You know, ahead of the defense. So, that mean you won't hit the shot. You see, I'm trying to work it around. Get a good shot. So, I was wide open there, and I took it. I know that's his shot. I've been shooting well, so I thought, you know, I'd just test the waters a little bit and see. So, there, you know, I had, I was in front of him, so I had a good chance to do something. So you want to make sure that you got a clear path to the basket. So here I'm taking my time. It's into the quarter. No reason to rush it. So I use a shot fake to try and get a better shot. And I got a layup. Plus I got a steal, but I couldn't didn't have time to do anything with it. So you can see if build up a 10 point lead and it's mainly just a result of shooting a better percentage um, he's a little careless with the ball in this game but um, so was I and really it's just the you know the shooting percentage that's the difference in the game so there took a shot but he got the rebound but and that one he took with the guy in his face so the first shot, really both shots, really weren't the best possible shot he could get. Uh, but he got one of them to go. And he's getting a little momentum there. So, yeah, I'm just taking my time. And I got a nice shot with Granger. So here the cry crowd quiets down. And so, you know, he has to try to work to get that momentum going again. And there's a good layup. So, crowd's trying to get behind him. So, I got everybody down court with me. He's got Hibbert covered up down there. And Granger was wide open. So, I took that shot. So, 
sometimes, you know, players don't hit like they always do. Either because, you know, you're just not using them right, or there had, had, had a guy in his face. And so that's not a good shot. So then I got another layup at the other end. Um, so you kind of have to feel, get a feel for the game. If, you know, if a guy doesn't hit his first couple shots, then, you know, there's another. You know, we had defense on him and it got bumped. And so that was, that wasn't really a good shot. Now, you'll want to kind of, if a guy doesn't hit his first shot or two, move on, try and get a shot with another guy or try and get that guy an even better shot because for whatever reason, guys don't shoot the same every game. I don't know why that is. It could be because of the team you're playing. Maybe they got somebody who plays better defense. I had a couple guys on me, but I still was able to get a clean shot. And let's see, I'm up by 12 now. They got that to go. So I know what I need to do here. I need to try and respond and get a dunk. So you know he's got here two people on him. <laughs> so so I didn't get that to go, but I got it inside. All right, he took a quick shot there, killed his momentum. On the other end, they got a layup. So now I don't do it perfectly every game. I play guys that they make it tough for me to take shots. So you're going to run across people that make it hard for you to get the shots that you want. That's what playing defense is all about. And so here I got one against one, and uh, I lost the ball because I tried to force it. But as you start to learn how to take better shots, you'll learn how to react to the defense. Now, the other thing is, is that if you're good, like if I was good with just Hibbert and that was it, then, you know, if he's guarding Hibbert with two guys, so there, see, I got a dunk. And I can't get it to him. And then I'm not used to like scoring with Collison or West or whatever. Then it's a little harder for me to beat a guy. And the way you win games is by being able to play with all the guys on your team. So you know, right now I play with five guys because I'm only good with about five guys. I only have time to learn five guys tendencies and how they like to play. Now I could have popped that, but see, I didn't. And I know that's west shot although i, I kind of rushed it and he got a layup on the other end so i could have gotten a better shot there so you can see he's hanging with me even though i'm shooting really good i'm only up by nine yeah i could have taken that three i mean he's a good shooter from three but i opted not to i wanted to work around a little bit make the defense work and so the shot clock's running down here, so I still had to take, you know, I had to take a bad shot. So, fortunately, I got a steal. You know, again, I could take that shot. He's open. But that shot's much better. Because I got a foul on a guy. I got to go to the line. Of course, I missed the first free throw. I got the second one to go. So, you know, I built up a 10-point lead here. All right, so he's got Allen. He's got the ball with Allen. He got, uh, got a good shot. It's just late. So, unfortunately, that didn't count. So, I don't remember if we show the stats here at the midway point. But I know I'm shooting a higher percentage. And that's why I got a 10-point lead. So I got the ball as well. So let's see if we can get a good start. So I can see he's in the 1-3-1. I know I'm going to get a shot at the baselines if I want him. And so I try it. 
But that was a bad shot, really, because I rushed it down there and just took it. So there I did a good job playing, playing defense and you know, at least bump the guy while he was shooting to make it a little harder shot. So everybody's down court with me. You see this? And so there's more rebounders. There's more people to throw it around to. Okay, he was wide open. But again, bad shot. You know, with a 10-point lead, I'm thinking, okay, I'll take that shot. You know, if I can, sometimes you can put a dagger in there. And, but you see it cost me. Instead of being up 13, I'm only down, up uh, 8. And so I need to be a little more patient. See if I, see if I am. I got a layup. So I got a much better shot that time. Okay, he's wide open. He got it to go, but see, he came down and rushed it. First available shot, he took it. On the other end, I got a layup. And I didn't have to work for it. Even better. So, he got a good shot there. Probably knows this player can hit that shot. All right, so see, I'm taking my time. Everybody's down here with me. And I'm thinking, okay, what kind of defense is he in? Luckily, I got that, that ball in there, and I got a layup. So, all those points in the paint, most of them are in the paint. So there, I got a steal. See, I could, t I could have taken that three. Who knows, maybe even hit it. But I chose not to. So there's West with his shot. Of course it didn't go. Normally I hit that shot. But I think I tried to rush it because there was a defender there. I was afraid he might rush out. Sometimes the defenders are pretty quick. I got another steal. And look at this, I got a dunk. Well, I didn't get a dunk. But I got a good shot. I got fouled. So, see if I can get both these. So the lead you can see is growing. I'm up by 13 now. Up by 14. And it's the primary reason, other than his turnovers, is that I'm shooting a higher percentage. So now he's extended his defense a little bit. Hopefully because of that, it'll be a little easier to get a shot. And there, I got it done. All right, so see how he responds. And he took a really a bad shot with Garnett. He got the offensive rebound. You know, it's not to say Garnett can't hit that shot, but... Garnett can probably get a better shot. I'd be willing to bet that Garnett can dunk it just like Hibbert every time down. So if it were me and I was playing the Celtics as my team, the first thing I'd probably try and do is get a dunk with Garnett every time. He's probably gonna hit, he's probably gonna finish it much better than Hibbert. So there at the end of the shot clock I had to take a, a jump shot, but it was within the first couple circles. All right, that was a pretty good shot, but still had too many guys around him. And that could have just been a function of, you know, I'm shooting so well that, you know, made it, made it harder for him to hit that shot. Same thing with that Garnett shot a minute ago. So, again, I could have taken that shot, but there's a better shot, hopefully. And that wasn't it. Just Collison... He just, you know, in the trees there, he's going to get it blocked. So, you know, I made a bad decision there trying to force it. So, again, he got another turnover. And, uh, you know, I got a layup. So, in this game, he's made it a little easier for me to get good shots because 
he's been turning the ball over and I can get out and get an advantage. So there, he's got a three. Quick shot. Could have taken more time to to get a better shot. You know, now he's down, so you, you know what he's thinking. He's got I gotta I gotta shoot it, so that's why you know he's gonna take that shot all day. You know, you're thinking, well, I gotta try and make up some ground here. I'm gonna take a quick three. So the game's about over here. So you can see that in this game, you know what a good shot is, what a you know, what a bad shot looks like. And if you concentrate your effort in getting shots within the inside take charge circle and the close circle and shoot most of your shots in there, then good things are going to happen. And you can see here I won by 16 points, 17 points here, unless somebody scores. I could have chucked a lot of threes, but I didn't do that, and so... I got 65 points in five-minute quarters, and I, I really only remember like shooting and hitting one three. So you'd think to hit 65 points, I would have had to shoot a lot of threes. And we'll take a look at the stats here in a second, so you can see what the box score looks like. And you'll see that I, if you do the math, you know when you do a, a quick uh, match with a friend, it doesn't show you the stats, but you can see I was 28 for 37. I only missed nine shots, and that figures out to be 76% from the field. And you can see 22 times 22 is 44, so he shot under 50%, and that's one of the reasons that I won. So I hope that helps you learn how to shoot better shots. Visit Coach2K.com. <laughs>